It is now my pleasure to call on Ms. Lyons, who will deliver our commencement address. Ms. Lyons. Father Marr, distinguished members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, and honored class of 2016. It is good to be back on Mont Eagle Ridge. 41 years ago, I sat where you did, nervous, excited, probably more than a little hungover. <laughs> yeah? <sighs> and while I would like to say to you that I spent the ceremony listening intently to the speaker and contemplating my future, the reality was that I was simply dreading saying goodbye to my friends. So it was a very different world in 1975. For one thing, we were definitely fashion challenged. All you have to do is look at the yearbooks. But we had great music, other than that unfortunate disco period. In fact, in 1973, from this very stage, Bruce Springsteen played in concert. And I met him. And we paid him $250 for that privilege. <laughs> we had no such thing as personal electronics. I was fortunate to have a roommate who could afford a rotary dial telephone and an electric typewriter. Now, I had a great time here, I will not lie to you. There are so many things that I do not remember I had such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. Anyway, <laughs> one of my closest friends was Father Mars' brother John. He is a friend of mine to this day. Anyway, our proudest accomplishment was producing a mock April Fool's issue of the Index. We were the onion before they were the onion. For example, we had the president of the university on a big old motorcycle as the front page. Father Slattery was not amused. The entire thing was a farce and a parody. We had a column that was a mock conversation between St. Vincent and the Blessed Mother, whose statues used to face each other. And I wrote an advice column called Rapping with Rhoda. <laughs> I don't remember all of the content. And yes, as a result, we got into a little trouble. But I do remember that putting it together was some of the most fun I have ever had in my life. Remember this, John is a distinguished Vincentian now. Back then, I never saw that coming. <laughs> my class was also distinguished in that one momentous evening, we kidnapped the nursing dean's portrait from Dunleavy Hall and took her out for cocktails at the Cove our infamous hangout downtown. Sister Bernadette was toasted by all manner of patrons as we put her up over the bar. And then we, when it was time for her to go home, we sent her home in a cab to the security shack. <laughs> You're even laughing. I was also in more than a little trouble for that little prank. <laughs> but I would like to think that Sister Bernadette Armiger, who I had the privilege of caring for in her final days on this earth, would be laughing as hard as we were. I graduated from the School of Nursing during its heyday. We had hundreds of students in our class, and our graduates were considered the most sought after in all the prestigious healthcare institutions up and down the East Coast. It is so special for me to be here today to see the first cohort of nursing students graduate from our revitalized School of Nursing. Congratulations. When I was in a position to hire new graduates several years after my own graduation, I always hired a Niagara grad. Now you may think I'm being biased, and yes I was, but my friends in business and other fields told me the same thing. Graduates from this university seem to have something different, something special. I tell you a few of these stories because I know now that my parents gave me a great gift by sending me to Niagara. 
Not only did I receive a world-class education from the outstanding faculty at this school, I made friends that I still hold close to this very day. In times of sadness, loss, or personal challenge, these are the people who show up first. In these 41 years, I have learned a lot about loss, loss of my dad and very dear family members and friends, loss of my youth, <sighs> an involuntary loss of a beloved job, and in recent years, losing control as I became a patient in the very institution in which I work. There is nothing more humbling than being in situations where you have to suspend your own sense of self-direction. These are the times that I call upon the values and strengths that I learned from my family, from my friends, from my faith, and from my time in this great institution. They all taught me that the measure of character is not how you behave in the good times, but how you handle the tough ones. There have been many lessons learned along the way, and as I took my trip down memory lane, my thoughts invariably returned to a few simple guiding principles that have helped me in my life. I am glad to share some of them with you today. First, remember your core values. You will be tested. You will be asked to compromise those values, personally or professionally, particularly in times of personal challenge. Resist the temptation to cut corners for immediate or short-term gain. Develop a personal reputation that is based on integrity and honesty. Show up. Be present. Make your contributions noticeable. Never just mail it in. Make people remember you as the one you can be counted on. Second, in times of sorrow, tragedy, or despair, look outward, not inward. Remember, there are people who will help you, but you often have to ask. Resist the descent into negativity. Use the experience to focus on making a change and move forward. Third, find your passion. You spend over a third of your life working in your profession, so find something you love. My passion is oncology nursing, and I have spent all of my professional life doing this work. It is never easy. It is often full of sadness and grieving, but in my time, I have seen tremendous advances that have produced millions of cancer survivors all over the world. I know in my heart that I contributed to these breakthroughs, and along the way, I helped to ease the suffering and pain and to make a difference in lives of my patients, my employees, my friends, and my family. When I look back, it doesn't get much better than that. Number four, you may be finished with your formal education, but you can never stop learning. Take advantage of the world of information available to you. That doesn't mean limiting yourself to sound bites from the internet. Read a newspaper, read a book, <laughs> attend a lecture, take up a hobby that is completely separate from your profession. It will expand your mind and bring a balance to your life. Number five, practice tolerance, particularly for beliefs in people who are different from you. This is a time in our country where we need dialogue and, dialogue and understanding, not insults and nasty rhetoric. <laughs> Spend time talking to people whose views are different, whose religions are different, you will develop an understanding of cultures and orientations that will help you see a different side of a myriad of issues. I am borrowing this from someone else, but call your parents. Call them often. Spend as much time as you can with them. They are your best friends and your closest confidants, and they will not be with you forever. Make it your mission to take care of the, them the way they took care of you. <clears throat> Put down the iPhone. <laughs> Put it down. Practice the art, the lost art, of conversation and human connection that isn't a text message or a Facebook post. Look in someone's eyes and talk to them. Or better yet, get comfortable with sitting with someone in silence. Really. Number eight, remember those less fortunate than you. Call upon your faith and those Vincentian values and seek a life of service. 
If not in your work, then in other parts of your life. We are all simply one paycheck away from personal disaster. My personal role model is my 91-year-old mother who works in an inner city soup kitchen once a week. She doesn't have to do it, but that is the kind of person she is and how she raised her kids to be. Number nine, this is easier now, but keep in touch with your friends. We used to have to write letters, the horror. <laughs> we couldn't afford long distance phone calls and there was obviously no social media, but we all made the effort. Come back for your reunions, keep the connection. In 40 years, I guarantee you, you will count your Niagara friends as some of the most important people in your life. Number 10 and final, never, ever, ever stop having fun. Keep that wicked sense of humor. It will make the tough times easier. The best parts of your life and the hardest parts of your life are ahead of you. But the good people at Niagara have helped you get ready for what lies ahead. I wish you all the best of times, full of laughter, good health, and great friendship. Do not let other people's opinions of you define you. Find your path, hold on to those you love, stay true to yourself, your beliefs and your values, and you will be just fine. So, from a former Hellraiser, <laughs> from the class of 1975 to the class of 2016, congratulations, you did it. <laughs>